This is Preacher Rick. One more time, sharing the Word of God for 10 minutes, Lord willing, or right in that general area. Today we're going to be looking at a patriarch arc from the New Testament, and that would be Timothy. Timothy was a young man, and he was discipled by the Apostle Paul. He became a young pastor. I'll read a little bit of the history, a little bit of a lesson for you first, and we'll get right into the Word of God. But he was a disciple of Paul, as I said, and his companion on a lot of his missionary journeys. Uh, his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois were both Christians, and they had a big influence in his life. And we can sure take something away from that. We have a big influence in our children's lives. It's very important that we rear up our children in the ways of the Lord. The Bible says, train up a child in the way it should go, and when it is old, it will not depart from it. I've said many times, it may depart from the training for a while, but that training will never depart from the child. You can bank on that. The Word of God says so. Amen. Anyway, his father was a Greek, and so that's a unique thing. He was not a Jew. Uh, and uh, he probably lived in Lystra. Uh, where Paul took and had him circumcised so he wouldn't be offensive to the Jews. And there's another lesson to be learned in that, that, uh, you know, when with the, the Greeks, be with the Greeks, and so on and so on, when with the Romans. And basically, it's not that you blend in, it's that you are non-offensive. If, if, you know, Paul said one place, if my brother, if meat offends my brother, I'll eat meat no longer. In other words, if there's something I'm doing, I know that hinders another Christian, I'll intentionally give it up, he's saying. And that's a good lesson to be learned, isn't it, when you care that much about other people. Well, that's brotherly love now, let me tell you. And uh, anyway, so he attended Paul on several of the journeys we tell, talk about, and just some of them was Troas and Philippi and Berea. You could read that in Acts 17, 14. Uh, he followed Paul to Athens, and that's where uh, he uh, sent him to Thessalonica. And you got the, that's how you got the books of Thessalonians. Okay, then you can read that in 1755 uh, uh, and 185 uh, and uh, First Thessalonians 3, 2. The first parts in Acts uh, we're talking about. After this, uh, he was with Paul at Corinth, and that's in First Thessalonians 1 and and uh, Second Thessalonians 1, 1. Both of them 1, 1. He was with Paul at Ephesus in Acts 19.22. And you got the book of Ephesians. Okay, he was with uh, him there, and that's where he sent him to Macedonia. This is good history stuff to learn. And later he went with Paul into Asia, and was with him, and you can read that in Acts 20, uh, verse 4, and was with him for some time. He shared Paul being put in prison, uh, incarceration there in Rome. And you can read that in Philippians 1.1 1, 1 and Hebrews 13.23. And we was uh, them in Ephesus, in Second Timothy four, chapter four and chapter five. He is possibly, and I thought this was interesting. If you read the book of Revelation, the angels of, of the churches there at the beginning of Revelations, it calls the angels of the church. And a lot of people believe that to be the pastors. So he could possibly be the pastor, the angel of the church at Ephesus, mentioned in Revelations two one through seven. Anyway, that's some good history for you now. Yeah, just a little bit more here I'd like to, to share with you. Uh, so after, uh, Paul, after he was aged and, ex and very experienced, he writes to the young Timothy as a pastor. Timothy becomes a pastor, and he's a very prime example of a young pastor and how God can use them. And uh, so when Paul wrote to him, he told him the task is challenging. He said, false doctrine must be erased, public worship safeguarded, and mature leadership developed. In addition to the conduct of the church, Paul talks pointedly about the conduct of the minister. Timothy must be on his guard, lest his youthfulness become a liability. And I'll read the scripture where he's told him that, rather than an asset to the gospel. And that's what really matters, getting the gospel out. He must be careful to avoid false teachers and greedy motives. And boy, them greedy motives get a lot of pastors, young pastors especially, and money and fame and uh, all that kind of stuff can set in. The devil loves to use stuff like that. Pursuing instead of that stuff, he should pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and the gentleness that befits a man of God. Amen. All right. Now, as we look at the very beginning of 1 Timothy, the first chapter, of course, it was written by Paul, but to Timothy. 
And we're looking at the life of Timothy, him being reared in a godly, uh, with a godly mother and grandmother. Uh, Paul told him here at the first chapter of 1 Timothy, starting at the first, he said, it says, under Timothy in verse 2, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God. And he goes on in verse 3, and I besought uh, thee to abide at Ephesus, which I went into Macedonia, which I told you earlier about, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine than true, sound doctrine. Uh, thank God. Neither give heed to f uh, fables and endless genealogies. A lot of people spend a lot of time with endless genealogies today. Uh, you know, I like my family tree uh, to a certain extent, but I, I, I spend very little time on it. Uh, that stuff doesn't really amount to hill bean when it's all said and done. Uh, and Paul realized that. Uh, so he said, uh, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, and so, so do. Uh, you know, he was a Greek, uh, so what what going to help to run his genealogy anyway back? He didn't have any Hebrew roots. Now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart, unless it was to his mothers, of course. Then he could start mixing them and get all mixed up about that kind of stuff. And of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. And then uh, I wanted to get to verse 6. From which some having swerved and there's a lot of christians swerving today you know what policemen do at least they're supposed to if they're behind you and you're swerving that means you're probably drunk or high on something else so they pull you over to keep you from having a crash or killing yourself or killing someone else right and that's just good logic uh, well I, i'm afraid a lot of christians especially a lot of ministers today are swerving and that's what paul talked about from some having swerved having turned aside unto vain jangling. Well, not, I was studying up vain jangling. Basically, I was writing down what it is. It's, it's really a fruitless discussion. Boy, there's so many fruitless discussions today. I, I was thinking of how people have swerved away from the truth, and they're on Facebook with all these fruitless discussions, talking about things that are just so fun. They used to call it out in left field, but they're not even in the ballpark. <laughs> not today. Not this foolishness that people are talking about in our country today. Uh, it just amazes me. But anyway, Paul warned Timothy as a young pastor not to give in to that kind of stuff and, and to be strong in the faith. On over, if you look on over in the uh, fourth chapter, I'd like to read verse 11. He said, These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth. And that's what we were talking about earlier. You have to be careful if you're a young pastor uh, not to... to uh, show pride be lifted up with pride and and uh, feel like you know it all and all that kind of stuff uh, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity till i come give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine and neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy and that reminded me of me when they had laid on my hands as i read on with the laying on the hands of the presbytery, meditate upon these things. And so uh, pastors have to really meditate. Preachers have to meditate upon what God wants them to preach. Because there's really only one preacher that I've shared with you many times, and that's the Holy Spirit of God. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy property may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself. Listen real close to this verse, and we'll stop reading. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt, listen to this, in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Woo, glory to God. And that's why I'm preaching today, to save myself and them that hear me by being sound in doctrine, by listening to the voice of God, by preaching, thank God, of the unsearchable riches of the Lord Jesus Christ that Timothy preached, him being the example of a young pastor. Well, I'm far from young now, but I did pastor in my young days, and I still try to help some in the church. But let me tell you today, there never comes a place I'll stop it 
evangelism. Uh, never comes a place in a man's life that he quits preaching uh, uh, if he's called to preach the Word of God. Uh, as long as God opens these mouths, uh, this mouth that gives me a voice, uh, uh, by the grace of God I intend to preach His unsearchable riches uh, without fear or favor. Uh, and I know uh, uh, that when you preach the truth, it steps on a lot of toes. Uh, and I know that people can come against you. And uh, uh, the way I figure it, uh, if people come against me for preaching the truth, they're not really coming against me. Uh, they're coming against God Himself because I'm not uh, making up the words I preach. Uh, I'm preaching the gospel straight from the Word of God. Uh, and the Word of God uh, is the only thing that's going to save me and save the world. Uh, it will save as many as will take heed unto uh, uh, the preaching. Thank God. And that's what uh, uh, Paul taught Timothy. And that's what Timothy practiced. Uh, and he preached, uh, thank God, there in Ephesus. Uh, and he, uh, uh, thank God, uh, uh, built a church for the Lord. Uh, and it's time that we build a solid, uh, a rock solid church for the Lord uh, in this perilous times that we're living in. Uh, overcoming evil with good uh, and preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the answer, thank God. And the Bible teaches uh, that except ye repent, uh, ye shall all likewise perish. Uh, I preached all 66 books of the Bible and I've been preaching the patriarchs uh, and every uh, uh, message a man preaches, he can preach repentance and still get uh, uh, the entire word out because it's all through the Bible. Uh, and the Bible plainly teaches that God expects us to repent of our sins uh, and be born again, uh, washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he died on the cross that we might have life uh, and have it more abundantly. And I can declare unto you, uh, I have abundant life, thank God, in my soul today. Uh, I've been saved, uh, thank God, from a life of sin. Uh, and on this Father's Day of 2020, uh, I give glory to my Father which is in heaven uh, that He let me be a dad here on earth. Uh, uh, we've got many kids and many grandchildren. Uh, I have four, four kids and 15 grandkids and a great grandchild and a great on the way uh, and I praise God for all of them. Uh, thank God I love them all uh, and I praise God that He gave them breath. Uh, I don't take life for granted. I don't take my life for granted. Uh, I don't take our children's life for granted. Uh, I don't take uh, my soul for granted. Uh, I don't take their souls for granted. Uh, I pray for their souls. If my grandchildren are listening to this message, uh, if God tarries in His coming and gives it to it, lets them hear it many years for now, uh, I say turn to Jesus if you want to be with old Grandpa. Uh, uh, thank God He's the only answer. Uh, there's no other name given amongst men uh, whereby you must be saved. Uh, and you know, uh, maybe God will let these messages go on when I'm dead and gone, uh, but His Word won't change. Uh, the same message will be good a thousand years from now. Uh, His Word is forever settled in heaven. Uh, I say glory to the Lamb of God uh, that taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, 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 well, I realize that we're getting short on time. We sure have. We've used our time up one more day. But listen, uh, Timothy was a soldier of the Lord, uh, a young pastor, uh, a true patriarch of the church that we uh, uh, see today uh, that Jesus established. Uh, upon the rock he built his church uh, that the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Uh, I say bless his loving and holy name. Uh, the gates of hell still will not prevail uh, no matter what. Uh, straight is the gate and narrow is the way uh, that leadeth to life. And few there be that find it. I hope you're in that number. Uh, but wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many it be that go in there. I don't be in that number, my dear friend. Get saved. Listen to the old pastors like Timothy. And listen to the Word of God and save yourself from the destruction of the, the soul. That you might know Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. For it's in Jesus' name we preach to you one more day. We love you all. God bless you until tomorrow. Amen. Amen.